In this video, I want to go through the basics of finding the limit of a function. So notice in this case, here's my function. I want x to approach 0. Note that this function doesn't make sense when we plug in 0, because e to the 0 minus 1 will be 0, and 2 times 0 will be 0. So we can't just say, hey, plug in 0. So we have to find some ways to figure out what's going on. One way is just to graph the function near 0. So note that I'm graphing between negative 1 and 1. Oops, there we go, there's the graph. Now, of course, you could do this on your graphing calculator as well. As we approach zero, as x gets closer to zero, we look at our outputs, and we notice that our outputs are getting closer and closer to 0.5. So we have a hypothesis. Our limit is equal to 0.5, or 1 half. Let's check that by finding a numerical approach. And I'm sorry, folks, I've got this weird command in here. Maple is sometimes frustrating. Let's see if we can make this work. What I've done in this case is I've plugged in a number close to 0, 0.01, into my function. And I'm asking Maple, what is that equal to? And Maple says, yeah, that's close to 0.5. How about if we plug in something even closer to 0, 0 0.001? Then we get out something even closer to 0.5. Now, I also want to plug in negative values. So in other words, since I'm approaching 0, I'd like to approach it from the positive side and from the negative side. So here I'm plugged in some negative values that are close to 0, still close to 0.5. And here are some even smaller values, numbers even closer to 0. And we're getting really good values out. So in other words, we're getting some good informal evidence that as we get closer and closer to 0, this quantity gets closer and closer to 0.5. Now, in example 2, if you look at our text, there's what I call the second definition. And what that does is it says, all right, here's our guess for the limit, 0.5. Let's choose an epsilon that we're going to move away from 0.5. So notice that in this plot command, I'm saying I want my y to go from 0.49 that's 0.5 minus 0.01, to 0 0.51, 0 0.5 plus 0.01. If you're doing this on a graphing calculator, that's your y min, and that's your y max. Now let me show you what the goal is here. I'm going to actually change this a little bit. Let's just plot this between negative 1 and positive 1. If you've chosen a good L and you do a plot, you should be able to adjust this plot so that the graph doesn't leave the top or the bottom, but leaves off the left and the right. So far it's not working. Let's see if we can make it work. 0 0.1 negative to 0 0.1 positive. Nope, I'm still leaving off the left and the right. What if I move in closer? Let's add a 0 on each of those. Hey, that means I'm leaving off the left and the right. Why is that important? Well, that says I'm staying relatively close to 0.5. I'm not moving away from 0.5, so 0.5 is a really good choice for a limit. In particular, on this whole range, I'm within 0.01 of my guess for the limit. That's good. Now, let's make epsilon even smaller. I want to be very, very close to 0.5. I want my outputs to be very, very close. And again, I'll start off with something that doesn't work. Oops, sorry there. So note, I've set my y's, so I'm going from 0.5 minus 0 0.0001 to 0.5 plus 0 0.0001. Oh man, can we even see the graph? You can't even see the graph on there. Let's change. Let's zoom in a little bit. So here I'd be changing my x mins and my x maxes. Oh, there's the graph. There's a little bit of red there. It's really hard to see. So we're still exiting off the top and the bottom. Still exiting off the top and the bottom. Add some more zeros. Still exiting off the top and the bottom. Add one more zero to each. Yeah. So again, we have more evidence that as we get closer and closer to zero, and look how small our numbers are, this function is getting closer and closer to 0.5. And again, exiting off the left and the right of the graph means that we're really staying close to 0.5. We're not zooming up or zooming down. We're staying in close. 
all of this is one way of talking about a very informal definition of the limit. There's an actual formal definition with epsilons and deltas in our books that you may have seen that this tries to encapsulate. But if you can follow the graphical approach and the numerical approach and, appro and move your limits appropriately to keep your graph exiting off the left and the right, you're in good shape.